Hello everyone. Welcome to Learn Vue.js with Bingyang. In the next couple of videos, we will learn one important feature of Vue.js, the Vue components. Before we start to work on the nuts and bolts of Vue components, I want to introduce the philosophy or rationale behind this concept. In other words, why do we learn this? So what is a component? Let's look at our first topic, component-based development. According to the Oxford languages, a component is a part or element of a larger whole, especially a part of a machine or vehicle. Have you heard about Google's Project Ara? In Project Ara, Google engineers are trying to build modular smartphones that will let consumers hot swap components on the fly. So what they did is they decomposed an entire phone into different components. As you can see in the picture on the left, those blocks. For example, there is a CPU component, a battery component, a Wi-Fi component, a RAM component, a camera component, and so on. Look at the right side picture. This is a main metal frame, basically a slab with different slots where you can put in components. This changes how phones are manufactured and sold. Consumers won't have to throw away their entire phone when they want to upgrade. They only need to purchase and change the individual components. The basic idea behind Product Ara is to componentize a monolithic smartphone. Componentization is the process of breaking down a monolithic system into separate reusable modules that can be easily recombined. People have used this component idea long before this fancy Google phone. For example, in the aircraft industry, if a component of an airplane is found faulty, maintenance crew will not fix it on site in an airport. Instead, they will swap out the faulty component and install a new one. The faulty component will then be sent back to the manufacturer for repair. This expedites airplane repairs. Then software engineers start thinking, can we use this idea of componentization in front-end application development? The answer is yes. Over the past a few years, web pages have become more dynamic and powerful thanks to JavaScript. A consequence is that the front-end has a lot of JavaScript code connecting to various HTML files and CSS files with no formal organization. By using components in the front-end, we can better organize the project, so it becomes easier to develop and maintain. So, what are Vue components? Let's use our favorite Hogwarts shopping cart example to illustrate the idea of Vue components. Recall that in the previous videos, we wrote the HTML, CSS, and the JavaScript code of this shopping cart in one file, the app.vue file. With Vue components, Let's split this UI into several independent and reusable components. And I can easily find five components. The first one is shopping cart, which corresponds to this entire shopping cart. The shopping cart component then nests three child components. Cart title, it corresponds to Harry's shopping cart. Cart list and order summary. It corresponds to this portion of the shopping cart. This cart list component further nests child components called cart list item. And in this case, there are five. In each cart list item, there are image of this item, name, price, is in stock or is on back order, minus and a plus button, an input box for quantity, and a remove button. All of those HTML elements will be defined in this cart list item component. All right, this is straightforward. As you can see, components allow us to split the UI into independent and reusable pieces and think about each piece in isolation. It is common for a web page to be organized into a tree of nested components, like this. 
In Vue.js, there is always a root component. It is the app.view. You have seen that previously. So in this case, root has one child component, shopping cart. Shopping cart has three child components, cart title, cart list, and order summary. Cart list has five child components, cart list items. So what is a view component? In Vue.js, a component encapsulates its own structure, appearance, and behavior. Those correspond to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, respectively. So for example, this order summary component keeps its own HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code. So do other components. Here, I also want to show you the product structure for this shopping cart. Instead of putting everything in one file, like the app.view, now there are five .view files in our project. In a view project, we define each view component in a dedicated file using the .view extension. This file is known as a single file component, or SFC for short. Each SFC represents a view component, so one component per file. As I said before, there is also a root component, app.view, that I didn't bother to put here. Let's briefly look at the content of one of the .view files, order summary.view. Recall that each component keeps its own HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Don't worry about the details here for now. We'll implement this shopping cart later. My point here is, as you can see, view SFC, or single file component, is a natural extension of the classic trail of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The template, script, and style blocks encapsulate and collocate the view, logic, and styling of a component in the same file. So it's easier to manage and maintain. Here are some advantages of breaking a UI into several components. First, breaking the front-end application into components reduces the complexity of the project. Each component is less complex than the original problem, divide and conquer, right? This makes our application more organized and easier to manage. Second, improved reusability. We can reuse existing components for other projects or future projects. Third, improved productivity. We can quickly get an application down by composing or combining reusable components. In other words, produce new software fast. OK, enough theory. Let's look at a quick introductory example. Let's go to VS Code. Let me create a Git branch for this view concept, so it will be easier for you to review the code later. Git branch view components intro git switch view components intro Note that we're now on branch view components intro In this demo I want to define a button component that can display how many times you click it. In a view project, we define each component in a dedicated file using the .view extension, known as a single file component, or SFC for short. So let's do it. Under SRC, let's create a new file. And let's call this button counter.view. In this component, let's define a button. And on the button, you clicked me this number of times. And in the script, let's define a ref count. It starts with zero. And let's also Define a at click event. 
count plus plus. And here, let me copy and paste some styles. Right now, you cannot see anything here because this hello view is actually the content in app.view, this component. So next, let's use button counter component inside app component. And it is very simple. To use a component, we need to import it first into the consumer component or the parent component. From now on, I will use the two terms interchangeably. So app will be the consumer component or the parent component of the button counter component. Import button counter from this file. Then how do I use this component? We can use this component as a custom element. So let me get rid of this div. Button counter. We got it. As you can see that here, we have the button that we defined in here. So what Vue did is that it took the template we defined in the button counter component and use it to replace line number two in the app component. So that's why we're seeing this button. You click me zero times. So can I click it? Of course, let's try it. One, two, three. You should know that this number, the count, is not in app. It is in button counter, right here. So this count is three. But in app, there's no data, right? Components can be reused as many times as you want. So here, let's create another one. Now we have two button counters. Let me click the first one. Here's my question. Will both change or only this one change? The count. Let's take a look. One, two, three. What about this one? One, two, three, four. Notice that when clicking on the buttons, each one maintains its own separate ref data, the count. That's because each time you use a button counter component in the app component, a new button counter instance is created. So there are really two instances of button counter. If you're familiar with Java, you can think of this as the Java class. And these two as two instances or objects of the same Java class. They have the same look, same structure, but they keep their own data. So here is three times, here is four times. Okay, the naming convention for view components, like here, button counter, we're using something called the Pascal case. So we import it here, and then we use the Pascal case as the tag name. You can also use a kebab case tag name to reference a child component, like this button dash counter. So all lowercase and there is a dash in between. So line five and line two and three, they're equivalent. Vue understands that both notations refer to the same component. However, I recommend line two and line three, the Pascal case, because this differentiates the components defined by the developers from the standard HTML tags. Recall that all HTML tags are actually lowercase, like h1, a tag, input, and so on and so forth. So by looking at line two and three, I know that button counter is a custom component that we defined. Next, let's go to the browser and press F12. I want to show you the HTML code. So let me refresh. And let's click elements. Let's expand this. Okay, take a look. So let me click something. One, one, two, one, two, three. All right. So here is the first button, second button, third button. Well, weird. Where is my button counter tag, right? We're supposed to get button counter, button counter, and button counter, but now they're just a regular HTML button tag. Where is my view component? Where is my button counter tag, right? Because we wrote them here. And this one is a kebab, button dash counter, but here is still button. 
what happened. Remember, your browser does not recognize non-standard custom tags. What happened behind the scene is that view components are compiled into native HTML tags. Then what is this data-v-a9adc726? Okay, yours may be different. What is that? This is the CSS style. Recall that here, we define some CSS styles for this button. So I can remove it. Now it has the default button style, but the other two, they have the styles that I provided. Look at this image. You can have many components on one page. This component tree may become a little tall. Is there a way to visualize the tree of nested components? Because when I inspect the elements here, I no longer see views components. I don't see button counter. I only see the native compiled code. Recall that Vue provides a Vue DevTools extension for Chrome, like here. Okay. So we have the parent component, the app, and under app, there are three nested or child components. So if I click the first one, the count is one, that's the ref data. Then for the second one, it also has a count, but it has a different value. And the same thing for the third one. As you can see here is a tree of components. Since this is simple, you probably don't need to look at this visualization. Next, let me show you another example. Okay, so first let me refresh. Come here and use HR to separate them. Let me create two more components. The first one is component A.view, and then component B.view. Okay. In component a.view, first we're going to import component b. We haven't defined component b yet. It's empty here. So here, let's quickly write some code. Component b, All right? Let me close this uh, button counter. And also, let me close the app.view for now. We only have component A. So we import component B from this SFC. And here, inside the div, let's use component B three times. And also, let me give this div some styles. Background color, light, Grin. Then let's go to component B. And here let's write this is the grandchild component. All right, I want app component to nest component A and then component A to nest component B. So that's why I call component B the grandchild component, right? So here, let me also give it a style, background color, light blue. Then let's go to app.view. And let's create a div here. Let's print a message. This is the root component app.view and then we need to import component a from let me show you a different syntax I can use at slash component a dot view recall that at is an alias of dot slash src so here you can either use at slash 
or dot slash. Both are fine. Okay, then here, let's use component A twice. Component A. All right, then let's go back to component A. And here, let's add a message. This is the child component. And let's also give component B here some padding. For example, padding left is maybe 10 pixels. Save. All right. And let's also give component A some padding. Maybe five pixels. Now, this is better. Let me move this one to here. All right. So first, app is the root component. So don't worry about this. Let me comment on this first. All right, just look at this. And here, I put the div in the wrong place. It should be here. Okay. Also, let's give this a style. Background color, let's say orange. Padding, five pixels. All right, okay. All right, good. So this is very obvious. And here, let me refresh. The app component is the root component. In this case, the outermost component. It nests two instances of component A, which is the child component in green. Okay, then let's go to component A. Component A nests three instances of component B, which is the light blue here. Like this. This is the grandchild component. So let's take a look at the view dev tools. So here we have app. It has two child components, component A and component A. Then I can expand it. It has three component B, one, two, and a three. And here, the second component A under app, and we have component B, B, and B. So my point here is that it is very convenient to use view dev tools to inspect the nesting relationship among the components. All right, next, let's apply what we just learned to the Hogwarts shopping cart project. Okay, it's Hogwarts shopping cart time. Let's implement Hogwarts shopping cart using view components. But first, we need to find possible components. I discovered five components. The first component shopping cart represents this entire shopping cart. And of course, it is contained within the app component, which is the root component. Within the shopping cart component, there are three child components, cart title, cart list, and order summary. The cart list component further includes several cart list item components. So let's go to VS Code and create those five components. I just created a brand new view project using this command. The name of the project is Hogwarts Shopping Cart View Components. You can find a link to this project in the description of this video. Let's define the five components and wire them together. So first, let's delete the components that come with this newly created view project. So we don't need those. We don't need this. And here, let's delete everything and have a clean start. I don't need CES. Feel free to use CES if you want. And here, let's delete all the assets. But we keep this folder. Okay, so first, let's create five components under this components folder. 
Please note that app.view is not in this folder. App.view, components, assets, they are all under SRC. Right now, the components folder is empty. So the first one is shopping cart.view. Cart title.view. Cart list.view. Order summary.view. Cart list item.view. Okay. So for each one, let's quickly create the file structure using the view VS Code snippets extension. And here, let me write, this is the card title. This is the cart list. This is the order summary. And here, this is a cart list item. All right. OK, next, let's put them together. And we can start with app, which is the root component. So first, let's import shopping cart from dot slash components slash shopping cart dot view. Or here I can change it to at. So either way is fine. Then I can use this shopping cart here in my template. Shopping cart. All right. Next, let's go to shopping cart. We need to import three components. Import cart title from at slash components slash card title dot view. And then here is card list. And here is order summary. And let's put the card title here. And then put the other two in another div inside. Card list. Order summary. OK. Then in the card list, first let's import Cart list item from components cart list item dot view. Later we'll use it here in the template, but for now we can just print a message. Then let's launch the project and let's see the effect. npm install first. npm run dev. Okay, let's take a look. Very good. We have, this is the cart title, cart list, order summary. Right now there's no CSS. That's why we're following the natural flow of HTML. And then if I go to F12, and let's take a look at view. And here you can see the structure. App contains shopping cart. Shopping cart has three components, cart title, list, and a summary. Good, so we have the structure or the skeleton of our entire shopping cart. Next, let's add HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to each component to implement the functionalities. I split my screen into two parts. The left one is VS Code, 
which is our Hogwarts shopping cart view components project. And the right side is the Sublime editor, showing the static HTML file of the shopping cart. You can find a link to this static HTML file in the description of this video. Let's work on the template in each component, that is, how each component looks. Let's move the HTML snippet from this static HTML page into the six components, the root and the other five. Let's start with the app component. So for app, the only thing we need to copy and paste is this style. So copy and paste here. And then here, we're going to put a class. It is shopping cart. So I will show you how it looks like after we copy all the snippets from HTML to our view project. All right, next, let me close this and move on to shopping cart. First, let me copy the relevant CSS code. Scroll down here. It's from this one. We're going to copy these three CSS classes, cart container, cart list, and order summary. OK, so let's use the cart container here. Class cart container. So this one styles cart list and order summary. Basically, it is a flex box, right? And for this one, class cart list. And here is class order summary. Next, let's move on to cart title. Let me close shopping cart. Copy and paste. So here in the static HTML file, let's go to the HTML code that defines the cart title. It's right here. So copy this h1 and just put it here. All right, we're done. Next, let's move on to cart list. First, let me copy and paste the relevant CSS for cart list. Let me scroll up. And there is no. OK, no CSS needed here. That's great. The only thing we need to copy and paste is the HTML. So let's scroll back to the HTML code. Let me collapse this, collapse this, this one, this one, this one. So there are actually five cart list items. So we don't need to copy them here. Instead, let's just use this cart list item tag here, cart list item, and maybe use it twice. Then we have two items. Of course, they're the same. In this case, let's put all the cart list items in a div. Next, let's work on the order summary component first. OK, so first, let's work on the style. It's right here. Let me copy this from here all the way to the end. OK, great. Then let's go all the way down to the order summary. So copy this and paste it into this div. OK, as you can see right now, all the data are hard coded. All right, so let's close this and close this. All right, in the end, let's work on the most complex component cart list item. Well, it's not that complex. So first of all, let's copy the styles first. I guess it's from here all the way up to here. OK. Then in the template,
it should be here from this div all the way down to here. Copy. And let me delete this uh, div first, and then paste. All right, as you can see, everything is hard-coded. Dragon lever, the price, the availability status, the quantity, and so on. We'll fix those later. Okay, all right. Let me close this. Okay, let me close this. Also, we need to copy and paste the images under here, assets. I have already copied the images. Paste. Okay, so that means we need to change the URL. At assets, recall that at here is equivalent to dot slash SRC. So we're really accessing SRC assets image dragon lever. Okay, now it's time to launch it in the browser. npm run dev. And let's take a look. Perfect. We have successfully componentized the Hogwarts shopping cart. Essentially, there is no significant difference from the static HTML page you saw before, as all the contents are still hard-coded. But it offers a more organized and structured presentation of the content. Instead of stuffing everything in app.view, we split this entire UI into one, two, three, four, five, five different components. For now, all the buttons don't work. In the next videos, we will implement those functionalities. Next, let's go back to Learn View 3 with Bingyang project and do a quick summary. Let's do a quick summary here. In this video, we introduced view components, which allow developers to break down the application UI into smaller, manageable, and reusable pieces. Think of components as the building blocks of your front-end application. Each component can have its own HTML structure, CSS style, and behavior, which is defined in JavaScript, encapsulating everything it needs to function independently. And components can be nested like this, app nests button counter and component one. This is very similar to how we nest native HTML elements. Next, let me push this branch to GitHub. Introduction to view components. Git push. Okay. So here we have many components defined. But if those components cannot communicate with each other, that will be boring. In the next video, we will learn how components interact with each other. See you there.